Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Are you trying to understand all the different figure skating blades on the market? In this video, I will explain all the different blades, the types, what they're made of, and how they are mounted so that you can better understand which blade may work best for you. This is actually part two of my video series all about blades. I had actually intended to make one video, but when I sat down and talked about blades, I had 90 minutes of footage. And when I was editing what was supposed to be a single video, I decided it would be better for you guys if I broke it up into three parts. In the first video, I discussed the parts of the blade and the different kinds of rockers. If you missed that video, there's a link to it in the description down below. You can watch it after you've watched this video. Now, here's video number two in my series all about figure skating blades. Before I get into all the specifics about the blade, I wanna be clear that you should always consult with your own coach before making any changes at all to your equipment. They know you and your skating best and can make personalized recommendations. You should also visit your local skate tech and discuss the choices with them. They know the equipment best. It is also the role of the skate tech to mount your blades. You want this to be done by someone locally as often adjustments to the mounting need to be made. I always have my blades offset a little bit. You can see how my blade is not quite centered here. I always go to Greg at Polar Skate Shop. This video is not sponsored by Polar Skate Shop. By the way, I just really like Greg's work and recommend him to all my skaters. Now that all of that is out of the way, let's get into it. Different blade types. The most common blade is a parallel blade. It's easiest to manufacture this because it has the same width from heel to toe. And the sides are parallel, machined with the defined angle edges of several degrees along the bottom length of the runner. This increases bite angle. and allows for greater lean control and tighter turns due to more perpendicular interaction of the blade when skated at a lean. The parallel sides allow sharpeners to assess the edge more easily. Some lightweight blades with chassis of alternate materials such as aluminum or carbon composite hold a runner with tapered edges. Side hone blades have sides with a concave design, which causes them to be thicker at the stanchions and the edge while thinner in between. They're easy to recognize because they cause reflections to be inverted. Side hone blades increase bite compared to parallel blades. This feature is only seen in carbon steel blades. Slim line blades have a thinner blade for quicker changes from edge to edge. So it takes less body lean to accomplish an edge change. That being said, thinner blades have difficulty keeping a straight edge profile if it's subject to the impact of jumping. So slim line blades are usually best for eye stance or synchro. Horizontal geometry can also attribute to bite angle. Tapered side hone blades are wider at the front of the blade. They are thinned consistently down the length of the blade to the tail. Tapered blades are often side hollow ground too. This feature can reduce blade weight and friction along the ice and offers increased speed. With parabolic blades, the middle section is thinner while both ends are wider. The parabolic shape contracts more of the ice displacing weight along the blade, giving less penetration. This feature does remove some weight and is only found on carbon steel blades. Revolution blades were initially produced to be lighter than standard blades, but it was discovered that the composite chassis, the base that holds the blade, has some flex to it. This 
property cushions the impact forces. And some skaters say that this cushioning is very noticeable and it helps reduce the impact of jumps. It's challenging to perform moves that require a catched foot because of the shape of the chassis. You also want to make sure that your tech is skilled and has the tools to sharpen them. The latest innovation is the John Wilson Phoenix Blade. This is an entire carbon fiber body with a stainless steel runner. It utilizes a nanocharge matrix formula to increase strength and performance. After consulting with skaters, engineers, and coaches, the John Wilson design team created a blade that's 46% lighter than traditional blades. It's 30% lighter than Revolution Blades and up to 20% lighter than aluminum products. The patented technology showcases an unprecedented approach to building strength and performance throughout the blade's frame. This allows the Phoenix Blade to be officially the lightest blade ever made and on the market without losing any strength. And they are much, much lighter. I've held a traditional gold seal in one hand and the Phoenix gold seal in another hand at Greg's shop. And there is a noticeable difference, but I kind of like the weightier blade. That's my preference. They also say that the stainless steel they've selected for the Phoenix will outperform anything they've ever offered before in its ability to resist corrosion while providing extended edge life. Many skate blades are made of carbon steel. This is a steel alloy where carbon is added to pure steel. Carbon steel is generally inexpensive in comparison to stainless steel or titanium. Edge relief, sometimes called chrome relief, that's a standard process that is used on conventional carbon steel blades. The blades are coated by electroplating nickel and chrome over the bare carbon steel. And without it, the blades would tarnish and rust. Nickel chrome is often used for plating blades and is considered corrosion resistant. Let's talk about the other materials that blades can be made from. Aircraft aluminum alloys. This is an excellent material due to its high strength to weight ratio. Aluminum is also one third more elastic than steel alloys, making aluminum blades feel softer. Carbon fiber composite is derived from two or more basic materials with significantly different physical properties, joined to produce a composite material with excellent strength and rigidity. Similar to aluminum, it reduces the weight while keeping a high strength to weight ratio. Stainless steel derives its properties from the adding of the element chromium. The higher grades of stainless steel have higher concentrations of chromium. The addition of chromium forms a passive layer of protection against rust and staining in wet environments. Titanium is used as a steel and alloying element and is corrosion resistant. Titanium has a high tensile strength to density ratio and is exceptionally resistant to metal fatigue and cracking. I've talked about it before, but I have hardware in my ankle from when I completely shattered it. That hardware is titanium. A titanium blade can be as much as 40% lighter than a conventional carbon steel blade. Titanium's properties can also be used in plating to lengthen edge life. Which blade should you get? Coronation Ace Blades are designed for beginners up to double LUTs. They have more curved rocker that can help you work on turns and spins while also having small cross-cut toe picks to offer you more security on the ice while you work on your jumps. This is my go-to blade for developing skaters that are purchasing their boots and blades separately for the first time. You can get other blades that are based on the Coronation Ace profile, but in my opinion, there is nothing like a genuine John Wilson blade. A bit of history here. John Wilson was the royal tool maker. He was renowned throughout England for the quality of his tools, his crafting skills, and his unparalleled reputation for excellence. As skating popularity grew across Europe, Wilson was commissioned to craft figure skating blades for King William III in 1696 and the strong connection to British royalty carried on. This inspired Queen Victoria to commission a pair of skates for herself and Prince Albert in the 1840s. With a distinguished 324 year history, John Wilson has a deep rooted passion for skating. Today, the John Wilson brand remains the foremost pioneer in blade technology. 
fostering excellence in skating and using revolutionary manufacturing techniques to push the boundaries of what is possible. Not only have they been doing this longer than anyone else, most other manufacturers base their blades off the John Wilson profiles. I've tried other brands, but I always come back to John Wilson because to me, they feel the best. Suppose you're moving up from a Coronation Ace. In that case, I suggest that you move up to a similar blade to make the transition easier. From the Coronation Ace, it's often recommended that you go to the Pattern 99, which has the same spin profile when it's time to move up. Suppose you're emerging as a competitive skater with powerful jumps and you seek more control by being lower to the ice. In that case, Penner 99 may be a really good option for you. That said, I moved from the Coronation Ace to the Gold Seal. And while it did take me some time to adjust to this, I'm so happy that I did it. I love my Gold Seal blades for the crosscut pick and the higher stanchion. I find it easier to spin in them too. But discuss this with your coach and trusted skate tech before making any changes to your equipment. Most skate techs will select the size for you. Boot manufacturers provide their retailers with a chart that they follow in choosing the right size blade for your boot. Although blade sizes are consistent, boots can vary in their outer sole. Note that Adea boots like mine typically require slightly shorter blades than a Rydell or Jax in a similar size. In addition, using the manufacturer's guidance, a good tech will also measure the boot length from the tip of the sole to the heel. Blades come in sizes of one quarter inch increments and the length is stamped on them. Mine is right here. Well, that's where the size is. Can you see that? The tech will generally err on the longer side for the blade, as long as the heel plate does not extend beyond the heel of the boot. will have to be mounted to your boots. Always have this done by your trusted tack. Traditional boots with a leather sole need to be sealed with snow seal, varnish, or a marine grade finish before the blades are mounted. The center of the sole and the center of the boot's heel must be in exact alignment. Otherwise, stress is placed on the blade and the blade becomes bent or twisted. Holes should always be pre-driven using a drill slightly smaller than the screw size. Some technicians will seal the holes with silicone caulking before they drive the screw into place to reduce the chance of moisture getting inside. Pan-headed screws should be used in the slotted holes. Tapered screws are used in the recessed holes. Note that with Adea, there are special screws. You can't use regular old screws with Adea and the process differs a little bit from the traditional boots like Rydell or Jackson. If you're getting Adea skates, you want to go to an Adea authorized retailer. Otherwise, you could void your warranty. The front of the blade should be mounted first to eliminate the possibility of a whipped or twisted blade. The front of the long axis of the blade should be between the big and second toe. The rear stanchion should be at the center or slightly to the inside of the heel. Now, mine are mounted slightly different than that because I like them that way. And that's a really good reason to go to a tack because they can adjust it. But a good tack will watch you walk in the blades and see if you're wobbling or falling in and they'll make adjustments accordingly. I, I know my tech will also look at videos of us skating on the ice. All right, I'm gonna film you. Okay, do the other side. Nice, and use that to make some adjustments as well. Some skate technicians will mount the skate using four or five screws in the front and three in the heel. This provides options to the technician if the blade needs to be moved at a later time, and they often do. Going to your trusted tack will ensure that these details are taken care of. It is so important to go to a good tack a professional is knowledgeable about the manufacturers and their product lines. The same is true with every sharpening. Always go to your trusted tech for your sharpenings. 
While sharpening a blade primarily consists of restoring the existing hollow and removing as little of the blade as possible, there is a skill to it. It's a craft. While every good skate sharpener tries to maintain the original blade profile, sharpening does wear down a blade over time. So if you're replacing your blade after prolonged use, there will be a learning curve. Even if you're replacing your blade with the exact same make and model, be patient anytime you get a new blade. Also excessive or poor sharpening will affect the spin rocker area and the entire blade. So it's just essential to go to a professional tech that you trust, like I do with Greg at Polar Skate Shop. When it I post videos every week to help you with your figure skating, nutrition, fitness, and live a better life. So remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with somebody else you think it could help and just post it to your social media too. This is Amy, happy skating. I will see you real soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.